Hi, everyone. Welcome to Police Federated Church's podcast and YouTube channel. And we are honored to have uh, Reverend Charles Revis with us today, who is the Executive Minister of Mission Northwest, a mission that we support in the Northwest region here. And we are doing this series of connecting with folks from the, the missions and agencies and charities we support to 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 get them out in front of you to learn more about them to connect with them so uh yeah charles we are honored to be connected and be a part of the mission northwest family and so yeah tell us a bit about mission northwest and how long you've been serving with mission northwest well thanks pastor Corey. it's good to be connected with you today and to talk about mission northwest and the work we do together and uh, we uh, deeply appreciate Palouse Federated Church in Palouse and have followed the good ministry that's been taking place there uh, under your direction and leadership and the participation of the folks of the church that make the congregation thrive and represent Christ in that part of the Northwest. And uh, Palouse is a really cool town to come and visit. And each time I drive down that way, I know I'm going to be driving through some of the prettiest countryside in the nation and ending up in one of the really unique uh, special towns here in the Northwest. And so it's a pleasure. Yeah, Mission Northwest is a family of churches, an association of churches that have been connected together since the late 19th century, actually. And through their partnerships together or association together, their work together, have planted churches and helped churches find the next pastor. They've raised up churches and uh, have done a lot of work together, helping to do missions together in various forms in the Northwest as well as overseas. And so uh, Mission Northwest today uh, in the 21st century continues to be this association of churches that work together to resource and develop churches that connect people to Jesus Christ. And it's our belief together as a family of churches that people need Christ and they need to hear the good news of Jesus. And that is uh, spread most effectively through churches that care deeply for people that are far from God, uh, churches that not only worship together, and do good work together in the communities that they're placed in, but also churches that give witness to Christ uh, together as a worshiping, witnessing community of faith. And so we have a wide variety of churches in all kinds of places across the Northwest. And so it might be a church in Seattle, it might be a church in Anacortes, might be a church way out in Miles City, uh, Montana, down into Southern Idaho, and we even have a church in California, a church in Tucson, Arizona, a church in Elko, Nevada, and we have a church up in Alaska and churches in Utah. So we're all across Washington, Idaho, Montana, and points beyond. So that's mm. where we're located. And uh, it's big geography, but uh, we continue the connection together and modern day technology helps us in that respect, even like what we're doing right now. And so we also take advantage of some of these tools that we have at our disposal in today's world to work together. Cool. Yeah. And I know uh, folks may not know how I've been blessed by Mission Northwest or how our local church has been blessed. You said Mission Northwest West helps place pastors. It was about 20 years ago this mm -hmm. month that I was getting connected to Palouse Federated Church in the interview process uh, to be called there as pastor. And Mission Northwest was critical in that, essential. I mean, they're the link from where I started to becoming the pastor there and then have provided uh, ministry support over the years through um, training, training me, providing good yearly annual trainings, the leadership tune-up, uh, and then leadership gatherings for pastors, leadership learning communities that you started. And so uh, it is, folks in the pews uh, may not see that, but I, I have needed or depended upon Mission Northwest ministry um, in a bunch of ways personally to grow and to find support and encouragement. And the church needed it for 
um, yeah, f- finding me or connecting us. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a, a deep blessing and you've been, uh, the leader there, uh, that whole time. So thank you. Um, mm. yeah, it's our privilege to support, um, Mission Northwest. Um, right. yeah, leadership development, um, that's been critical in your time at Mission Northwest. Can you talk about some of the things you do for, uh, for local pastors, but also uh, lay leaders of churches, sure. uh, some of the things you you offer and uh, continue to do? Yeah, well, just to clarify, the, a family of churches could find that themselves doing all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we've tried to focus on leadership development, which includes placing pastors, but also supporting pastors, ongoing training for pastors, and, and in addition to that, leadership training for church leaders and the persons in the pew. Uh, in addition to that landmark, we also have our connection together. We try to foster that fellowship from church to church, pastor to pastor. And then we also believe in church transformation, or that's a landmark that we believe that uh, we work at helping churches be constantly renewed and transformed because churches have a life cycle and need help in getting back to growth again once they uh, stop growing or start struggle uh, with their vitality, so to speak. And then we believe in church planning and church restarts, and we've done work in that area. So circling back to the leadership piece is my personal conviction, and I think we've been seeing it play out immensely in this region, that the churches thrive when there's a strong a visionary shepherding style servant oriented pastor leading the congregation forward uh, versus uh, maybe a situation where the pastor is more laid back, uh, sees his or her role as primarily a chaplain to the people rather than someone that helps the church move ahead into God's preferred future for the congregation. And so It's that old saying that everything rises with leadership and falls with leadership, depending upon the competency of the person who is in the leadership seat. And uh, whether we like it or not, uh, pastors are in a leadership seat. And now that may take various forms and expressions of, uh, according to a pastor's skill set and passions, nevertheless, uh, to abdicate the leadership piece of being the shepherd that's been called to lead a church is to uh, primarily, I think, uh, is pastoral. um, It's just not a healthy thing. I would put it that way. It's not healthy at all for the church and uh, can lead a church into uh, a place of dysfunction if the pastor is not stepping up and giving a certain level of leadership to the congregation. And so uh, what we try to do is support pastors through these leadership learning communities that meet uh, monthly nine times a year. And with that, we have a curriculum that we recommend that the pastors study certain resources, certain books, certain video teachings and trainings. We gather pastors together for the annual leadership uh, tune-up event. We include with that church leaders and anybody wants to attend, but it tends to focus on encouraging leadership development at that level. In addition to that, uh, we do a lot of coaching that's informal as well as formal. Uh, For example, uh, I have a friend of mine that's a retired pastor in California. I've recruited to coach two of our pastors right now. And that's been good for him in his retirement years. And it's been a real blessing to these two pastors as he's come alongside these pastors and coached them on a regular basis. And there are also opportunities for lay leaders to get together through one of our, uh, we call it a co-worker connection LLC that Patty Duckworth leads, where any church leader, non-pastoral type across the region can join into that study group and be a part of that. Uh, So that's another piece of training. We do ethics training on a regular basis, uh, again, for pastors as well as church leaders and the average person in the pew can be a part of the ethics training, helping 
churches understand the value of boundaries, good ethics, integrity, all these pieces that come into play to be people of character, people of godly character, uh, to be wise about how we uh, live out our lives in such a way that honors Christ. So those are several ways we go about uh, providing training, uh, as well as from time to time, special webinars, uh, special mm -hmm. opportunities, and then even special gatherings. We have coming up in the Western side of our region and Shahela's on April the 20th, I think it is, we're having AJ Swoboda come back and do some teaching and training on the whole area of sexual uh, issues, uh, uh, given all the issues that surround human sexuality in today's mm -hmm. world. We're doing that. And then we have a big event happening in May down in Boise, where we're gathering people together to uh, resource the average church versus the big <laughs> mega churches. We're looking at churches that are smaller, midsize, and just how do we capitalize on the strength and the values of smaller mid and midsize churches? Uh, because the Lord is the head of every church, regardless mm. of the size, and he wants each expression of his body to thrive and, and uh, do well uh, for the sake of the gospel. So, so we're... Awesome. Those are a whole bunch of things. That we're doing. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you. And uh, for sharing all that. And so there's a ton of resources that you provide. And um, I know recently some exciting connections where Mission Northwest is connected to other good Christian agencies and educational institutions uh, around the country. Um, so if there's somebody out there listening that maybe wants to take um, a class uh, that Mission Northwest doesn't offer, but they want to take a class to get better at studying the the Bible more deeply or to, to teach it. Or does Mission Northwest have connection to like that type of training too, in addition to this other good stuff? Yeah, we've uh, just started a new thing called M28. Uh, M28 is a consortium of other like-minded regions like ours who realize that the old way of training pastors for the pastorate, four years of college, three and a half years of seminary is no longer sustainable. Uh, that will continue to go on, I think, but fewer and fewer pastors will be trained according to that model. Um, instead, more and more pastors will be trained in service in the middle of apprenticeship, so to speak, and will receive training along the way. And uh, so M28 uh, works with Kaira Seminary out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It's a, an established seminary, strong seminary, but they have a way to engage their training through a subscription uh, form. And so you can pay $25 a month, take as many courses as you want in that month, and over time, at $25 a month, uh, end up with a certification after taking 12 courses. And for us, it only takes 10 to actually find uh, oneself ready to be uh, ordained, or have an ordin uh, uh, ord ordination through Mission Northwest, one of the local churches. We recognize the ordination. Anyway, we will uh, walk with any person through this M28 process that feels called into ministry and wants to receive training for the pastorate, or any, any person in any one of our churches could take advantage of this training and just get uh, sharper theologically, biblically, uh, even in terms of how to be a good church person, that is a, a volunteer, a, a hardworking leader in the church, volunteer in the church. Anybody in our region can take advantage of this resource through M28. And so, so this how would they connect? Doing. How could they connect to that, Charles? Through, uh, We've been sending thing? out the information and the connection uh, mm -hmm. link to it. Basically, you apply for uh, apply for it. And as soon as you apply- So like missionnorthwest.org and look for M28. Yep. I know, I know I've shared the email you shared out to a couple of people. So if folks okay. are interested locally, talk to me. But you can Google Mission Northwest too, and uh, as well, and and find it. But um, yeah, for I mean, really affordable price getting 
high quality seminary level education, whether you're a Sunday school teacher, youth group leader, worship leader, want to know more about the background of the New Testament or the Old Testament or um, things of that nature. So uh, I think it's just an awesome 21st century adaptation for, for us to connect to resources yeah. like that. That wasn't available at all or even in my imagination when I went to seminary, you know, uh, well over 20 years ago. So um, and now it's something through technology we can do fairly easy. And um, I can't believe it's that affordable. That's yeah. amazing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, other things that you think folks should know about Mission Northwest, anything we haven't touched on that's key to uh, to your mission? Um, I know you've provided assessments for our church in the past. You, you help when churches don't have pastors to have interims. We didn't talk about yeah. that, but that you, you come in in times of crises and help with reconciliation issues and other things. There, there's so much we could talk about, but any right. other big things you want to mention that folks should yeah. know about? I, I think one piece that often doesn't get a lot of press, but we've worked alongside churches to restart churches huh. uh, and help churches that are at the uh, door of death mm. <laughs> and have hope for rebirth. And we've had uh, some success, uh, not always successful, but we've had several successes in that realm that have been really exciting to watch. And we serve a Lord who is a resurrected Lord. He's always bringing new life to people. And I believe that he can bring new life to churches that are simply mm. willing to lay down uh, their whole situation at his feet and say, Lord, we're at a point of desperation. What can happen here to bring about new life and hope? Um, not to bring back the 1950s or the 1960s, but to bring back vital ministry uh, in certain settings where it appears that uh, the church has come to its end in its present form. And so if, one quick example, uh, our church in Blackfoot, First Baptist Church Blackfoot, for several years really struggled and got to the point they were down to about, about 10 people. Mm -hmm. We were able to secure for them a transitional pastor who went in and did more than what a standard interim would do. He breathed new life into those 10 people, and they started new ministries. And then with a, an agreement that they made, the church made with the region and the transitional pastor and the 10 people, they signed a covenant that they would be willing to call a church planning style pastor and follow that pastor's lead. And they did that. They took a mm -hmm. leap of faith and did that. And then they called Kevin Oliveres. At that point, they'd grown up to 35 people. Kevin came in and within two weeks, they changed the name of the church to improve its uh, attractiveness in the community, to establish this is a new day and then started making these changes. Well, fast forward 10 years to today, a Blackfoot Christian Fellowship is mm -hmm. the largest Protestant church in Blackfoot today, running wow. over 200 people in two services. Scores of people have come to Christ and been baptized, and they are having some real inroads right now into LDS folks that are leaving the Mormon church and are finding Jesus as their coming to Blackfoot Christian Fellowship and hearing the gospel and finding out that they need to give their lives over to Jesus as Lord and Savior. And mm. that's just one example of what some of these restarts are, are producing in the way of fruit for the future. And so we do wow. that as well. And so they're that's great cool. to see what God is doing. The Blackfoot story is awesome. Kevin is a, a great leader. And I know um, he's been supported big time through Mission Northwest. And that's a good example of the connection that when the yep. church was without an, uh, a pastor and the transitional pastor and then connecting them with Kevin and resourcing them. And now he is yep. blessing others um, as he learns and grows. He um, he's, he's a great man and a good yep. friend. Um, well, Charles, this has been super fun. Just, just as a, a personal uh, touch here at the end, um, I know you love the scriptures. Do, do you have a favorite motivational story or character in the Bible that 
that you just resonate with uh, in your life? Um, yeah. Yeah. Probably the person for me is Barnabas, mm. who apparently was a joyous yet humble guy that God used to come alongside others and encourage others. He's known as the encourager. But I think of him as the guy that, um, you know, went and embraced uh, Paul, Saul, yeah. Paul, this persecutor that others would have seen as toxic, or I don't know if I can trust this guy's story of supposedly being transformed, and now he's a Christ follower. Mm. But he was bold enough and courageous enough to go and find out if he was for real and then realize he was and then vouch for Paul uh, before the apostles when they were probably skittish. And then from there, he goes, he ends up going to Antioch and starts ministering in Antioch, which becomes the new wave of church planting for mm -hmm. the, the Gentile world. Meanwhile, the rest of the apostles were hunkered down in Jerusalem and <laughs> and uh, probably fearful to get out and do what they needed to do. And when he gets to, when he gets to Antioch, he's so excited about what he sees there uh, that uh, it, the church just grows and comes alive. And he realizes this is bigger than what I can handle. So he goes, Paul, I need to go. Mm. Find Paul. So he runs out and finds Paul and brings Paul back in. And together in this partnership, this dynamic duo they continue to accelerate the growth and the work in Antioch. And over time, Paul becomes the greater figure, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother Barnabas at all. Um, yeah. You know, it's the, to me, I, I just think that's amazing Christ like person that we see in Barnabas that uh, we'd be wise to emulate that part. Awesome. So that's, that's one hero in the New Testament that I. Awesome. And, and, and often too overlooked. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Last, last fun okay. question. Uh, if you had to choose one for the rest of your life, ice cream or chips of any type, uh, what would it be? Ice cream or chips? And then what type? Oh, no doubt. It's ice cream by far. <laughs> Gee. Okay. I mean, okay. when it comes to chips, I'm more of a Cheeto guy. So okay. it goes in front of me and I can't stop. So I try to stay away from them. Uh, but when it comes to ice cream, my wife and I are addicted to ice cream, especially uh -huh. when it gets warmer. And uh, in fact, we just got back from Cancun two days ago. Mm. And we go to the gelato shop three times a day uh, <laughs> yeah, down in Cancun. And uh, for me, it's, uh, gosh, what, what what is the one I like? I'm, I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Oh, pralines and cream at BR. Pray, oh, always pray. order pralines and cream, but I like ice cream. It can be chocolate. It can be other kinds of things. Just, and just a good ice cream, huh? A cone coffee, or yeah. dish? Both. Um, Both. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> All yeah, right. Uh, we found another ice cream lover. That's if awesome. it's got caramel in it, though, I it's even better. So I I'm a I love caramel. So, awesome. Anyway, you know, our, yeah. our youth leader, just as a tidbit uh, for, for those Cheeto lovers out there, uh, Wa Ming uses chopsticks to eat Cheetos and his oh, fingers, on. his fingers <laughs> don't get orange. So you oh, go yeah, to his office right. occasionally and he's he's got chopsticks to get them out of the bag and he doesn't have to wash his fingers every, hey, you know, or lick them. Because yeah. I'm always getting busted after I've had my hands and they come along and go, oh, you've got orange dust on your fingers. You right. The bags. You accidentally my grandkids grab your my yeah, grandkids and I tussle over the Cheeto Cheetos bag. Oh, when we're well, doing vacation together, they're always stealing my Cheetos from me. And then I have to ah, steal it back and we just go back and forth. Those darn grandkids. I'm assuming it's still worth it, right? Even though they steal your Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> we better not get on the grandkids or we'd be here all day. So. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Our I've got pictures. Typically starts Story. our you know pastor meetings or region meetings is with the uh, grandkid stuff stuff which is joyful yeah. but charles thank you for the work you do and god bless you and your ministry and thanks for sharing uh about it here and uh look forward to anybody's follow-up or questions they have about this and to connecting you to to more resources that mission northwest offers so thanks and, and have a great day thank you god bless you pastor Corey.